for so many people here in California, the memories of our recent wildfires still very vivid, very painful. But even with that, new research by our ABC 7 News data team shows that movement into those fire prone areas really is not slowing down. As part of our ongoing series, Weathering Tomorrow, we examine the costs and possible solutions to living side by side with wildfires. ABC 7 News anchor Dan Ashley with the story. So that was the fire coming through and that came in in a matter of minutes. Ed Nessinger can recreate the terrifying moments from recent wildfires in Sonoma County in chilling detail. He captured images of fast moving flames from fires with names like Glass, Kincaid and Tubbs. The Tubbs fire, I was here at home. We noticed there were, we could smell a grass fire in the, in the distance. We lost uh, multiple homes and our family lost some homes and our kids lost home. But at the same time, you could say Ed Nessinger is yeah. uniquely resilient. Not only has he lost homes to wildfire in the past, he's also helping to build a new generation of homes designed to survive them in the future. Okay, so what I'm about to show you is a conventional style home that is built unconventionally. As a consultant and former builder, Nessinger gave us a tour of a development in Windsor near Santa Rosa. It's hilly terrain where luxury homes dot the same ridges that have recently burned. But increasingly, they're constructed with a dizzying array of technologies, ranging from steel framing to fire-resistant roofs and venting systems designed to keep flaming embers from being sucked into the structure. There's nowhere for the ember to get cast into. I would touch this resaw and cedar material and not ignite. And he says there is so much more to see, but before continuing our tour, it might be helpful to take a quick detour here to understand why fire resistant homes are now part of a multi-billion dollar debate over wildfire, insurance, and continued construction in areas known as WUIs, Wildland Urban Interface. First, more people are moving into those fire-prone areas on the fringe of forests and similar landscapes. An ABC data team analysis found that home building in WUI areas has increased 40% statewide over roughly the last 30 years. In that same time period, building even increased in wildfire-devastated counties like Napa, Sonoma, and Solano. And while areas like Lake Tahoe and the wine country continue to attract high-end development, Experts say the pressure to live or build in fire-prone areas is often more complicated. Kamiko Barrett is a wildfire researcher with Headwaters Economics. There are other reasons for living in these locations, and that's simply out of necessity. There's simply no other place to move into. And we know places like California, for example, do have a significant housing crunch. But after increasingly destructive cycles of wildfires linked in part to drought, forest management, and climate change, the insurance bills are coming due. The ABC data team confirms more than 600,000 policies were canceled between 2015 and 2021 in the state's highest fire risk areas. And a growing list of insurance companies are threatening to leave California, making affordable policies even tougher to find. If you ask any agent that's been around, they'll say, I've never seen the market conditions this bad. Amy Bach directs the consumer nonprofit United Policyholders. She believes changes currently being considered by state insurance regulators could also result in rising premiums in wildfire prone areas. Her group is supporting legislation to provide coverage guarantees to homeowners who build or retrofit their homes to one of two wildfire resistant standards. Any property owner who has met the standards, either safer from wildfires or wildfire prepared home standards. That's two different, very, very similar standards. Both are in effect. And the groups behind them are generating compelling evidence for what the standards can achieve. At their testing center in South Carolina, the Institute for Business and Home Safety uses powerful fans to blast burning embers towards a variety of home building materials to judge their effectiveness. This demonstration shows how a common wooden fence is helping flames reach the home on the left, while a metal fence gap on the right is preventing it. Back along the fire-scarred hillsides in Sonoma County, some of the most advanced technologies are being put to the test in real time. And then this is the foil back OSB material that's, uh, that's underneath the roofing material. That's where construction consultant Ed Nessinger helped peel back the covering on an ultra-modern home, 
revealing the steel construction and fire-resistant materials used from top to bottom, a home that now qualifies as a double survivor. This was in construction during the Tubbs fire, and then in 2019 when the Kincaid fire came through, the fire burnt all the way around. It hadn't been landscaped yet, but the fire burnt all the way around, and we suffered no smoke damage inside the house and no exterior uh, damage to the outside of the house. Now the challenge could be whether similar technologies can be introduced quickly enough to protect fire prone areas in the near future and possibly ease a dangerous insurance crisis in California. What is clear is that our future ability to live side by side with wildfire could ultimately depend not only on where we build, but how. Dan Ashley, ABC 7 News.